Welcome to the Flower Lounge, a place for conversations with wildly creative people and a little plant-loving wisdom to help you experience life in full bloom. I'm Katie Hess, flower alchemist and founder of Lotus Way, and I believe in a world where we're all living at our personal edge. Welcome to the Moonshine episode of the Flower Lounge podcast. It is December 2019 and I am here with Christina Winger, intuitive astrologer. Hello, Christina. Hey, Katie. Is it just totally crazy that it's December? I know. The year's already over. We're going to be in 2020 in like a blink of an eye. I think we're maybe already there. No, <laughs> just, yeah. I don't know. It's just all of a sudden this year has gone by so fast and it was really... I don't know, kind of like sobering (laughs) to kind of reflect and and look forward because you start to do that this time of year, you know, and looking into 2020 more specifically, just looking into this month and like, wow, it's the end of a decade. It's crazy. (laughs) And November was, I don't know about you, but that was one of the most potent Mercury retrogrades that I've experienced in a long time. I don't know. Everybody around me too was having a lot of challenges. So it feels really good that Mercury will be moving out of Scorpio in December. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So December, let's see. We have quite a few sign changes. Mercury, as I mentioned, will move from um, Scorpio into Sagittarius and will also move into Capricorn toward the end of the month. So Mercury, after being in one sign for nine weeks, will change signs twice in December. Venus As we're recording this, Venus just today actually entered Capricorn, but she will also change signs toward the end of December. And perhaps the most or like the biggest sign change that's going to have a long lasting effect is Jupiter moving into Capricorn because this will be a year long transit. So that is pretty big news. And then of course, we have a full moon in Gemini and we're going to have our first eclipse of eclipse season this month. So You know, it's Sagittarius season for the beginning and, you know, until the solstice, but there is so much Capricorn energy. It reminds me a lot of how it felt like Scorpio season and Libra season. (laughs) It feels like there's a lot of emphasis in other signs than the sign that the sun is in, but that also can give the sun some very free reign to really work on highlighting that part of your charts and kind of kind of cleaning house. That's what I think about with solar seasons. So that's a little bit of the overview of the month. I feel like maybe you're asking me a question, but I can't hear you. Are you actually asking me a question? I'm here. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So with all this Capricorn energy, is that like a preview to 2020 preview to January? Yeah. I mean, we're this, this month sets us up. We have been setting up for January for quite some time, but especially with all of these planets moving into Capricorn. And then, of course, the first eclipse will be in Capricorn. Yeah, we've got a lot of Capricorn. So, and Jupiter, let's just start there, actually, because Jupiter moves into Capricorn on Monday, December 2nd, and that's the first major aspect of the month. So right there, we get this strong sense of change because Jupiter has been partying in Sagittarius for the last year. And while it's been fun, I, in the last week, have just been ready for Jupiter to move on out of Sagittarius and just kind of get some ground grounding, you know? Technically, Jupiter is in what's called fall in Capricorn. It means it's not a super strong, happy placement. And that's because Jupiter wants to make things bigger, wants to say yes, wants to keep on keeping on. And Capricorn being ruled by Saturn, which is kind of like the opposite of Jupiter. It's like Freaky Friday with those two. Saturn is like restriction, conservative, you know, less is more. And so there's a strong adjustment that we're all going to be experiencing. You know, I think that ultimately Jupiter and Capricorn is grounding you and helping you grow your wisdom and that there's this kind of slow and steady growth available if you're really ready to do the work that you need to do, right? Taking responsibility, really your integrity, like your value system. And 
I wrote down build the vision because we're dreaming all year long when Jupiter was in Sagittarius and it's so easy with Sagittarius to just be like, sure, yeah, let's do it. It's going to be great. Over promise and under deliver where it's better in this case to kind of under promise and work really hard and then maybe be surprised by the results. I will say that you've got to be inspired. You've got to keep the inspiration going because it may feel kind of hard. And there can be some kind of conservative or constrictive or even fear-based kind of feelings with Jupiter in Capricorn. But this Jupiter is, you know, entering into that Capricorn part of your natal chart. And this is going to, for y'all listening out there, like understanding what area of life Capricorn is involved in for you will help you make the most of this year really considering the Sagittarius where all the growth and learning and then how you're moving it forward and building something in the next area of your life from what you've learned. So Jupiter is in Sagittarius until December 2nd of 2020. Jupiter will be in Capricorn until December 20th of 2020. From gotcha. December 2nd, 2019 oh. to December 20th. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's a really long time. Gotcha. That's what a year looks like, you know, give or take a few days. Yeah. So any thoughts on that or anything or shall I just move along? So what is it about Capricorn that's typically restrictive? I get that they're like builders. They look at the legacy. They want to be responsible. They want to put their head down to the grindstone. What feels, res- where might people feel? I suppose you, you have to kind of look to your chart to see where you're going to feel that. But what's the restriction about? It really is because the planet that rules Capricorn is Saturn. And Saturn is about tightening things up, creating boundaries, trimming things, reducing things. And so where Jupiter in Sagittarius, where Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, is very like, loosen the belt, eat some more, say yes, let's, yeah, we can do that too. Oh, I have a million dreams and they're all going to come true, you know. So Capricorn's more like, well, what can we really do? What's realistic? You know, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't want to hope, you know, make too many promises. You know, it just feels very toned down. And so, you know, if you just had a mighty fantastic Jupiter Sag transit, and perhaps you've been having some challenges in that Capricorn area because of, you know, Saturn has been in there, Pluto's been there. It just might feel like, you know, where'd the fun go, right? Because it's about responsibility and responsibility feels restrictive sometimes because you can't do everything that you want necessarily if you're going to be responsible to what you've said you've committed to, right? Is that helpful? Think of it in terms a little bit about last month's Scorpion where we were like recommitting to ourselves and sort of like re re-upping on like the devotion to whatever aspiration we were making. So I guess you could see it as like, it's a great time to streamline and just like make the main things, the main things, huh? I think so. I'm actually really excited about it. And I have not been excited until recently because I'm just over. Because the thing about Jupiter and Sagittarius is it's kind of, it can get a little debauchery, you know, like, I mean, it's just for me, There's been plenty of fun, but there's also been some things that have been amplified and exaggerated that are not comfortable. And that's that's because of where Sagittarius is in my chart, my sixth house. So there's been a lot of day-to-day tasks. Like I'm constantly feeling like I'm swimming in a sea of paperwork or things to do, and I don't have any time to do what I want. And also it kind of aggravated some underlying health conditions. So like, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm ready for Jupiter to bring some, some luck into the part of my chart that's been really challenging, also Capricorn, right, into my relationship, for me, it's a seventh house thing, to maybe help bring a little bit of optimism. If we do the work, if we commit to doing the work, you know, that we can create good results. So it just, again, not a happy placement, but for some reason, I'm just ready for it. It feels good to me. It feels very grounding. You know, I wrote down curb your enthusiasm (laughs) because I mean, you know, I'm a pretty enthusiastic person. You can just kind of lose touch with reality if you're just always like, partying. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. But just not willing to kind of look at what's not working. You have to, that's what Saturn wants to say, see as well, you know, what's not working so we can make it work. That's what Pluto and Saturn are doing. What's not working, let it go. Let's make something stronger, more solid. So 
It's a big deal. Again, the best thing for you out there to do will be to look in your natal charts and see what part of your life. And then if you have any planets in Capricorn, then of course, or, or in Cancer, right? Opposite. You can be getting these Jupiter experiences, conjunctions, oppositions, or any of the cardinal signs, really, because the Aries and Libra will be getting Jupiter squares if there's planets over there. So it's it's more of the same, <laughs> but I don't know. It feels a little, it feels slightly uplifting. It just kind of uplifts a little bit. So it's a big deal. See how you feel. I'll come back in January and see how people are doing with it. The other thing is, is like, we won't know what it feels like until we're there, right? And then we'll know what it feels like. We'll get a real sense of, I think this month will, you'll get a sense of what it feels like to have Jupiter and Capricorn because you can't not get a sense of your Capricorn sit area this month. There's just a lot going on there. So, all righty. So, The good news is this week, this first week, so we're looking at, you know, December 2nd through the 8th, this week, Mercury gets out of its retrograde shadow. Even before Mercury changes signs, Mercury finally gets out of the shadow of its retrograde. So that alone is liberating. And if you are someone who's been having some of that shadow kind of blowback that can happen, it really will be completed by Saturday the 7th. So that's a nice thing. And then there is, you know, an aspect over the weekend. There's a lot of aspects on Sunday. But in general, what I would say is that the main one is this sun square to Neptune. And it might really have you feeling kind of low energy, feeling a little kind of confused or not really thinking clearly. There's some other aspects also involved that a Jupiter squares Chiron that same day. So you might feel kind of tender and sensitive over the weekend, this first weekend in December. And so you really want to notice your pacing. I mean, it's the holiday season. People are getting, they're all revving up and really just take time out if you need to rest, recuperate, relax. It's a great day for creative projects or meditation, things like that. That will be a nice way to handle any kind of draining energy that can happen. The squares can kind of do that sometimes. So ultimately this week, it's like a lot of change. Jupiter changes signs. There's some little sextiles in the week that help communication be more cooperative. If you look for that cooperation, Mercury gets out of its retrograde shadow, which can also help with communication. And then of course, there's just this kind of depleting um, energy towards the end of the week. And, and really, that's week one. So in a nutshell. So can I ask you a quick question? So the shadow of Mercury retrograde is like almost 10 days long? Well, right? the shadow is actually longer than 10 days. It's been, when did Mercury station direct? So Mercury station direct on the 20th of November. So how many days is that till the, till the 7th? That's two weeks, right? That's two yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. So it is, what that shadow is for people who don't know, is that when Mercury is retrograde, it goes over a certain area in the zodiac. So this last retrograde we had, Mercury was retrograde between 11 and 27 degrees Scorpio. So technically... Before the retrograde, Mercury goes through that experience in a direct way when it passes over those degrees, and then it goes back to 11, and then it has to go back forward. So those are the shadow periods once the planet's not retrograde, but still in that area where it was retrograde. So if people are sensitive or they've had a funny Mercury retrograde, there can still be little, it's almost like if Mercury retrograde was let's just say it was an earthquake. <laughs> there are like aftershocks that happen, little kind of echoes. And it doesn't, not everybody feels it and they're all different. And definitely as Mercury picks up speed, it lessens, you know, but for those of you out there who are like, I'm still feeling it. It really is going to be done, done, done soon until next year when Mercury goes retrograde in Scorpio again, but we won't jump up, up a year ahead. No need for that. So week two begins on the 9th, Monday, December 9th. And this is the day that Mercury moves into Sagittarius. So yeehaw for new, a new placement for Mercury. Mercury will be here in Sagittarius through the 28th of December. So almost until the end of the year. And again, technically Mercury is in detriment, not a happy place, just because Mercury's really good at the details. 
And Sagittarius is more of a big picture thinking. So it can be a little overstimulated and scattered, but it's very expansive thinking, I would say, especially after being so inward with the Scorpio and with nine weeks of Mercury and Scorpio, it will feel like things are really lightening up in the mind and in your ability maybe to be able to talk (laughs) and communicate without feeling just like super intense. I mean, it was just so intense for so many people. So there's some, it's more of like a broad strokes, like, you know, not like all the little details, but just big, can be a little hot headed, can be a loud mouth. There's a, such a thing as sag mouth. <laughs> so it could definitely be some serious sag mouth. It will be interesting to see what the news headlines are all month long with the loud mouths out there because this will definitely activate certain charts. I will not mention their names. But yeah, it'll, it's going to be interesting. But definitely feeling a lot of freedom and spaciousness and light after maybe some dark nights. Depression, I, I think it's been a hard retrograde. So that's, a, that's just good for movement and for change, right? And this is the week of the full moon. And you know, the energy once Mercury moves into Sagittarius is going to encourage you to speak up if something isn't feeling right. Whereas with Mercury in Scorpio, it may have felt like you just kept chewing on it or kind of going in for another dig into like the pain. This is more about, you know what, that's not working. I'm going to speak up about it. Like not from a place of you hurt my feelings. And why did you do that? But like, that's just not right. And I I would like to ask for this, you know, looking for a solution, rather than kind of being stuck in that wounded place. So that's going to be a nice shift in energy. And that's supported by Mercury making a trine to Chiron right before the full moon. And the full moon is on Wednesday, the 11th or Thursday, the 12th, depending on where you live. So for me, for this on the West Coast, it's on the 11th. And yeah, it's like at 9, 12 or 9, 13 p.m. on Wednesday, the 11th. And Wednesday is Mercury's day. And Mercury is the planet that's in charge of this full moon in Gemini. So some of the things I was saying about Mercury, having just moved into Sagittarius, can help us feel into some of the themes of this full moon like oh new new ideas new ways of communicating maybe a lot of information coming in that feels a little scattered after being very focused with mercury and scorpio there are some square aspects to neptune both the sun and the moon make this square to neptune in this chart which can definitely bring some confusing confusion or kind of murkiness or blurriness but it can just also if you're feeling really creative and inspired it can bring a lot of ideas a lot of inspiration for creativity and creative thinking I think that considering the time of year, being that it's the holidays, that this is the kind of moon where there's going to be like, oh, I want to go to this party. I want to go to that party. I want to go talk to you. I want to talk to you. And there's going to be a lot of that kind of chatty and kind of, you know, feeling like being super social. And so there's going to potentially be a tendency to overcommit because it all sounds fun. Mercury is in Sagittarius after all. So really just doing your best to stay grounded. There's not a lot of air in general in the astrology. So having the the full moon and air sign, it's going to kind of bring some movement, but you also, there may be a tendency to be a little scattered with this full moon. I feel like the nervous system already gets a little taxed at this time of the year. And so this would be a good full moon for um, breath practices, pranayamas and things like that to help work with your breath and help to like disperse any nervous energy really maybe trying to think before you talk but probably won't happen (laughs) because it's a pretty chatty chatty moon yeah anything about what do you think about that as time goes on in the month but the flower which isn't a flower it's actually a creature essence again if you're new to this concept no creatures were harmed in the making but it's an essence of the crab if you're in the flower evolution, and that is all about coming out of your shell, mm. about emerging, about, and not in a sense of like 
you know, like, hey, everybody, look at me. It's more like sort of a gentle, soft emergence, like taking your place at the throne of your own life and your own destiny and really being able to like embody your gifts to a deeper extent without hiding. So no more hiding, being able to like show up truly and authentically about who we are in the world and letting go of shyness or a tendency to stay in the background, the ability to play a little bit. And if you're not in the Flower Evolution program, we recommend working with full bloom, which is collaboration, compatibility, determination, fearlessness, dissolving old habits. And that kind of sounds like full moon and Gemini. Yeah. I mean, you'll definitely be out of your be called out of your shell on this full moon. Although, you know, there is a conjunction that happens a little earlier than the full moon that I didn't mention, which is Venus makes a conjunction with Saturn and Capricorn. So so many things to say. First of all, Venus and Saturn come together once a year. So this is a yearly kind of encounter. And this is already starting to take us back. And in fact, this full moon kind of launches us into eclipse season. This is starting to take us back because in July, during the last eclipse season, Venus was opposing Capricorn. So this is really like you're encountering the thing that you kind of noticed you were facing, right? And definitely what's working, what's not working in relationships, relationships and and finances are two areas for Venus, right? So you're kind of encountering and dealing with the responsibility of the choices that you made, right? And So that because when I think about the past eclipse season, I remember that Venus was in cancer when she was opposing Saturn. It made me think of the crab also. And this is really an invitation to really check what you're committed to and only carrying forward things that you value that you have. Again, with Capricorn, it's all about integrity, right? It's not like out of fear, like to restrict yourself, kind of feeding into that crab thing, but it's valuable and you can commit to it and you're going to carry it forward. And if it's not, you're just going to let it go, right? Let it go with the full moon. And this is also a really good time to check your spending budget because people are spending a lot of money at this time of year. Well, all the time, but all these gifts really noticing if you've already overspent, I think encouraging to buy less and to really buy things that are more like long lasting or useful or, you know, again, it's, it's not so much about the bling, but about the staying power or the practicality or, you know, the value of the gift, you know? So that aspect may have some people feeling a little tender because it is a conjunction with Saturn and it's Venus. So it's not the happiest thing, but it's happening. So. And it's kind of woven into this chart. And it really is after this full moon, like we're all, we're in eclipse season for sure. And that's an important distinction because no more in the next, the next couple of lunations that we have are not going to be normal new and full moons. Things are going to start to get a little funny. So, but yeah, that's not a reason to hide, right? And especially as we're approaching again, the end of the month, the end of the decade, we're visioning into this whole 2020. I mean, it sounds so... Like when I was a kid, like to even think of the year 2020 was like impossible. It sounds so futuristic, but we're living in the future. And so what are you taking forward? It's pretty exciting. I think so. Wednesday, Chiron stations direct. And so this has been a five month retrograde ish. And so you're reflecting on the past five months and acknowledging what you've healed, right? Again, with Chiron, often we can get fixated on the wounded part. But there's the healing part and the wisdom, right, that comes from really integrating past experiences, not just avoiding them, but integrating them and healing and learning from them. So that shift in direction for Chirons happening right after the full moon, the next day on the 12th. The full moons can affect people in different ways. Some people, they make really excited. Some people, they, they're hard on. So if you're feeling a little self-conscious or touchy or just kind of sensitive, just know that there's a lot of activity around this full moon. Um, and then let's see the weekend. We've got the Friday the 13th. That's exciting just in and of itself. What's going on? There's like a couple of aspects this weekend that are 
Well, you know, first I will say, I guess, is that Venus, after making that conjunction with Saturn, then has to make a conjunction with Pluto because Saturn and Pluto are basically hanging out in the chart with each other. And so this is kind of a catharsis in relational dynamics. I was thinking about Pluto this morning on my morning walk. And one of the things I was thinking about was Pluto or Hades, when when he comes up out of the underworld to grab Persephone, not a nice move, by the way, but I was thinking about how the earth opens up. And I thought, oh, I guess, you know, Pluto can make openings. You know, sometimes it feels like upheaval, but it's also an opening into something very rich. If you think about what's inside of the earth that we as humans tunnel in and try to dig out, there's a lot of gems, there's a lot of resources, there's a lot of richness. And so this kind of healing maybe catharsis in relational dynamics, right? It's maybe there's a little bit of an upheaval or a little bit of, you know, stress, but there's an opening that wants to be made. And again, I think that if you can, you're encountering something, maybe it's a pattern or a tendency that you saw pretty clearly in July when Venus was opposed to Pluto. So this feels very purifying and you know, I guess I'm trying to spin it in a more positive way, but it's 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 pretty big ask and it's a pretty big thing. And it may not feel, you may not feel super awesome. You might feel a little challenged. And so just to look for the goal, because that's, you know, if the earth opens up, there's riches in the earth. What what are you, what's the the wealth and the treasures that comes from letting go of things that really are not working anymore? especially in relationships. And even it might be some sobering encounter for people around their spending, you know, or around money or things like that. There's also on that same day, Friday the 13th, Mars and Scorpio is connecting by trying to Neptune in Pisces. And so that is a lot of water energy moving, you know, and I think it's just going to allow there to be some emotional healing if you want there to be that not necessarily just kind of stewing in it, but like clearing and just think about moving rivers or ocean waves or things like that. So that's Friday. And then Sunday, there is a trine between Jupiter and Capricorn. You remember Jupiter is in pretty early Capricorn with Uranus and Taurus. And this, their connecting by trine isn't going to happen again until 2028. And they will be in different signs at that point. So it's not on everyday aspect between these two planets. And so this Uranus and Taurus wants you to try new things. This is an invitation to kind of shake up some routines, try something new. You know, maybe you're thinking about 2020 and what you want to commit to. And this is going to maybe open you up to some new possibilities. And, you know, if you want to get like ninja in your chart, Look at the Capricorn area. That's where you initiate the thing and then you commit to growing it in the Taurus part of your life because Capricorn's cardinal earth starts things and then Taurus is like the tending and growing in the garden, right? So if you want to like get in there and look at your chart and see where the trine is activating, you can do that. But if not, just feel into change and trying something new. So that is what takes us, that's the last aspect of the week. And then we move into week four. Three. Anything over there? Yeah, I was just going to say that a uh, flower essence just came to mind, which is one that I always take typically in December. So every December I'll take it. And that is holiday cactus. It's Ooh. a cactus, you know, those beautiful blooming magenta pink. Sometimes they're luminescent white flowers that people have on their December cactus plants or holiday cactus. And it is a flower that helps us sort of like come from a place of legacy, like in terms of planning 2020, not just saying like, oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, go to the gym. It's more like, what is this thing that I want to be known for in life? Like how many years do I have left in life? What do I want to create? What impact do I want to make? And then kind of backing into our year plan, coming from that place of real priorities like real deep, profound, meaningful aspirations. And so that might be something that's worth taking a look at if you're out there wanting flower essence support for December, for your planning and for all this Capricorn sort of like putting things into 
like planting the seeds and putting them into gear. Yeah, legacy building. That's beautiful. I'm going to pull mine out. I know exactly where it is. Just to kind of piggyback on that, I know it's like a waning moon time that we're talking about right now. But again, when the moon is letting go of her light, she is kind of sending things out and sharing information. And so when we get to the new moon pretty soon in Capricorn, eclipses aren't necessarily a time to make all your intentions because they're such wild cards that it's really hard to make an intention from that place. So I think that starting earlier and kind of, again, by clearing away and letting go what's really not important so that what, like what you said, you can commit to those meaningful things that you want to live and build and create and connect with in your life. I think that's great. I love that, that holiday cactus. It's a beautiful I love cactus flowers so much. So just thinking about that flower every time you take it will make you feel luminescent. It's good. Okay, so what does the third week bring us in December? Oh, it brings us two sign changes. Let's see. It's kind of like not a lot of aspects toward the beginning of the week. So it's all kind of crunched together from Thursday to Sunday is when the bigger aspects happen. Of course, the moon is doing stuff all week long. So it's not like there's nothing happening. But the planets get involved around Thursday. And on Thursday, we have two aspects that are going to encourage you to, one of them is going to encourage you to take action that's very practical and strategic, strategic, and this is a Mars-Saturn sextile connecting Scorpio and Capricorn, right? And it kind of like what you said around the vision, like what do you what do you need to do? Write those things down and get really practical and grounded and strategic, Mars and Scorpio is a great strategy planner. And then that same day, there's a Mercury-Neptune square. And Mercury in Sagittarius, which is already a little confused, a Neptune in Pisces, which can definitely be confusing. There's This is a maybe hard to focus, kind of scattered thinking. It could also just be like you're just, they're going to encounter some people that day that are really chatty and verbose. They just can't stop talking and maybe be, they're putting their feet in their mouth because they just keep saying the wrong thing. Like, I think it's going to be interesting again to look at the news around these days and the fake news. But you really, you might be feeling a lot of woo, buzz, but get grounded, practical. Keep it practical, keep it strategic and don't believe everything you think <laughs> because that can get you into trouble. And then on Thursday or Friday, depending on where you live, Venus changes signs. So Venus moves from Capricorn to Aquarius. And Venus will be in Aquarius through the 13th of January. And this is really like a very independent kind of energy and a little emotionally cool, which is not a bad thing, right? And Venus in Aquarius wants freedom. There's definitely more of a collective thinking rather than it's just you and me, baby. It's like, what are you and I going to do for our friends or something? Like, it's just like a bigger kind of picture with Venus and Aquarius. And there can definitely be some unusual or out of the box kind of desires maybe coming through while Venus is in Aquarius. So that's a shift in energy as well. And then we have the solstice on Saturday. So this is when the sun enters Capricorn, creating the winter solstice. And here in the NoHo, that is the Northern Hemisphere. Maybe it's the NoHe. But doesn't NoHo sound better than NoHe? <laughs> NoHe is no good, right? NoHe? What do you think? <laughs> what are they going to call it, Katie? <laughs> NoHe. NoHe. It's a NoHo. Here in the NoHo, <laughs> it's the longest night of the year, which means the sun is coming back. Right. In any event, we're full on in Capricorn season, even though maybe you felt like you're in Capricorn season all year long. And this, when the sun, wherever the sun moves in your chart, it's an invitation to bring awareness and light and kind of cleaning out that part of your life because you know, your natal chart is broken into 12 little parts. Each part is about a different area of your life. And so, wherever this is for you, it's like focusing the energy on this part of your natal chart. And again, it's the end of the year. So we're looking back and reflecting and you're considering, like, like Katie said, the legacy that you're building and you're setting your goals from this place of intention and responsibility and commitment, right? Not from fear, not from, you know, hiding, which can be, there's, you know, they say that Capricorn children are like 
old before like they're oh they're born old people they're just kind of wise but they're also like a little more reserved so it's not from the place of reservations out of kind of fear but more like what can I really realistically think I can make happen you know if I can pick three things rather than 10 and really you know really work on them and commit to them and show up and tend them then that's plenty right three valuable things and that same day Venus is making a connection to Chiron that's really going to say, hey, like, don't beat yourself up for what hasn't panned out this year, right? The hindsight, sometimes we can get a little self-effacing with that. Like, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. This failed, that failed. More like, what did you learn from your mistakes, right? And and let, kind of letting go of what didn't work, but maybe honoring the wisdom and the growth that you've learned from things that didn't work out and how you can, you know, try again, but in a new way or in a more grounded way, or maybe you just let go of something because it's really not even worth your time and energy, right? So that's all on Saturday. And then Sunday, Venus, again, she makes some aspect to your honest square. So there's definitely some kind of like, don't box me in kind of vibes going on. Little maybe feeling rebellious, maybe just, you know, want to be alone or do your own thing. And Mars is also making a sextile to Pluto that day. And so, I don't know, it just feels like power moves. And I don't know, I just get this image of, for some reason, like somebody shopping in New York. Somebody who's just like really focused and on point and doesn't let anybody get in the way. And just like, I'm doing what I'm doing. Don't get in my way. Don't box me in. Don't tell me. I don't know. Just very kind of strong. But, you know, there's a lot of family time and togetherness around this time of year, which is fantastic. But it can also feel a little like overbearing sometimes. And with Venus and Aquarius, you really want to make sure you have space for yourself so that when you do come together, that you feel in like you can be with the people that you're choosing to be with. That's week three. Any, any thoughts, questions, comments, flower essences? I mean, the one that comes to mind is just the, the blend, like the support blend of determination and fearlessness. And what's the support make, blend? Making the impossible possible. Full bloom. Oh, uh, full bloom. Oh getting all your holiday stuff done. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, right. Uh, Get done. Take that. Um, Be like Santa. Check off your list. But it's also about receiving. It's about softening. It's about tenderness, letting go of attachments and fears. Mm. So it can give us a sense of like, I can do anything, you know, kind of, I can put up with any sort of holiday situation and I can work with the people I have around me and increase compatibility mm. and be soft and gentle when when needed. That's a good dose. Dose of dose, everybody. <laughs> Spike the water. That's a good idea. <laughs> or couldn't it be wouldn't it be wonderful if you walked into the, the shopping place and as you walked in you were like little puffs of full bloom just kind of like sprayed you kind of like when you land in Indian they spray you with the pesticides but instead it's like full bloom you know how on the airplane oh, like yeah. the little pesticides come out you're like, Ew, gross. but instead it's full bloom oh yeah that'd be wonderful take your full bloom out and spray people <laughs> ask if they want it maybe first but you know yeah I mean especially for holidays <laughs> like if you're planning like you know drinks and dinners and stuff like put the joy juice, put the infinite love, put the full bloom, put the everything in the drinks, the wines, the beers, the salad dressings, the mm. everything. Salad dressings. Love it. The eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? The eggnog. Oh, eggnog. People drink that. I thought you said the log, like a cheese log or something. <laughs> the Bouche de Noël, that's the log. That's the cake that looks like a log. It's that French like holiday cake, you know? Mm. That yeah. cake, that log, put it in the icing and the frosting. Put it in everything, right? I mean, put it in everything. It's, it's, mm-hmm. even if people don't know it's there, I always think like, you know, because there's nothing ever negative that could come of it. And because it's just giving people more joy and peace and love and calm, there's nothing wrong with adding it as an ingredient to everything. I mean, people put all kinds of things you don't know what they're putting in your food in a restaurant. So, you know, yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with a little joy juice. That sounds good to me. I maybe have to pull that one out too and just put it in the kitchen. (laughs) Maybe I should take it out with me to Thanksgiving dinner. Hmm. Okay, thanks for making me think. All right, week four and into five, we're just going to go for, we're just going to go from, why does it say the sun? 
Yeah, sun is Capricorn on the 21st. There's a mistake on this other astrology calendar, so it made me confused. I just wanted to give you, they want to give people the wrong information. So then we're going from Monday the 23rd on through the end of the year. All righty. Okay. I'm grounded. I'm grounded. All right. So Monday the 23rd, sun square Chiron. Self-doubt, comparison, imposter complex. These things may be arising. Again, it's the holidays. Or joy juice, fierce compassion, full bloom, forgive yourself, move along. And then Tuesday, the 24th, the sun in Capricorn makes a trine to Uranus and Taurus. So this is an, in, it's, it's Christmas Eve for those of you who celebrate, those of you who don't, a lot of people are, you know, do something unexpected or surprising. Maybe there's an unexpected surprise in your stocking. Maybe somebody you didn't think you were going to connect with shows up. Maybe this is an opportunity to make a new tradition, right? Something new, something out of the box, something a little creative and a little unusual that feels really fun and really good. It's, it's a trine. So enjoy the energy and it's a grounded trine. So that's a nice thing. And I just feel that there may be some surprises and well, since the new moon is an eclipse, surprises are definitely on the menu. Now we have our new moon in Capricorn, which is a solar eclipse happening the 25th for folks on the West Coast, Hawaii as well. It's at 9, 13 p.m. That's weird. Both the new moon and the full moon are like at the same time. <laughs> How bizarre. Okay. But she puts it into the next day for some, some of y'all. and. This is uh, an, an annular eclipse. So it's not a total solar eclipse. It's an eclipse that has the ring of fire around it, but it really is not going to be visible for most of the world. I think that South Africa, like tip of South Africa, maybe some of Indonesia will be able to see it, but it's not one that a lot of people are going to see. But it doesn't mean it's not going to impact us. It is a new moon and the moon is taking away the light of the sun. That's what happens in an eclipse. And it's hidden. So things become hidden. They, um, in general, though, what I want to say is that this is reactivating a new layer of activity for things from maybe July-ish of 2019, because this is the same parts of your chart that are getting, are getting these eclipses, Capricorn and Cancer. This one's in Capricorn. It's a south node eclipse, which means it's about letting go. So this is a really good end of the year, clearing away south node eclipse, letting go of what doesn't work, letting go of what doesn't work. And, you know, it's got the energy of that Jupiter Uranus trine in it, even though it's separating. And the Jupiter is very much conjunct the sun and the moon. It's a very much a part of this eclipse story. And so this is a new Jupiter. We're just figuring out what Jupiter and Capricorn is about. But there is an element of hope, even though things may be feeling gnarly and bleak. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of disaster astrology out there about 2020 and about Saturn and Pluto and all the things and around eclipses. Don't buy into it right? Keep your hope alive. Let go of things that aren't working. All the things that I said in this episode about anything I mentioned about Capricorn, about integrity and wisdom and your values and the legacy, all those things, like that's what's important, right? And if it doesn't have meaning for you, you can't commit to it. If you're done with it, let it go. It's the end of the year. It's the end of the decade, right? Don't take it with you. And part two of this eclipse season will happen in January on the 10th when we have the full moon eclipse in Capricorn. This is at four degrees Capricorn. So for those of you who have planets or angles around four degrees of Capricorn, it's getting a lot of mm, magical kind of mm, cosmic kissing, cosmic, cosmic kissing. I was going to say something else, but I don't think I should. Yeah, some of you it's going to impact a lot. Some of you are not going to feel like much of anything, but I would not necessarily, this is more about reflecting in, on the past because eclipses, they connect time periods and we're in eclipse season rather than 
really doing this big, okay, I'm doing all my resolutions and my visions and my everything on this here new moon. I'm not going to do that. That's, I'm going to do that more around the solstice personally, or even at the beginning of the month, even now. Yeah, so do your, do your 2020 planning in the beginning of December, right? Yeah. And then just, just coast and just take the, after the 25th, just take it off. Just take downtime. That's it. Yeah. I just blocked off my schedule. I'm excited. I blocked off the last two weeks of the month. <laughs> so that's the eclipse. It's a new moon. There we go. Um, see, it's easy. We're going to be fine. Everything's good. Eclipse. Schmeclipse. I don't think that worked either. Friday, the 27th, the sun makes an exact conjunction with Jupiter. So this is going to magnify the energy of the eclipse. Maybe it's going to help you feel a little optimistic about your 2020 goals, even though you might have let go of a lot of things or realized that you're like kind of less is more. And you're like, ah, but I like a lot of things. Maybe you feel good about it. Maybe it's like, all right, yeah, I can get with it, right? And then on Saturday, Mercury moves into Capricorn. Mercury will be in Capricorn through the 16th. Mercury will make a Kazemi in Capricorn next month. In fact, it's part of the full moon eclipse, but we'll talk more about that later. So this is very good for strategic and practical thinking down to earth, you know? So it can just help you feel like it can help you let go of things and just make some grown-up decisions, right? So this is good, maybe. <laughs> it's definitely going to tone down the energy after all the Sagittarius hot air. It's cooling it down, so cooling down the mind and bringing more structure to the thinking, right? So that's, that's what's happening there. And then Mercury makes a couple of aspects as the year ends. On the 29th, makes a square to Chiron. So you definitely may be having some conflicting thoughts or, again, this kind of fear of the future. Everybody's saying terrible things. And, oh, my God, the 2019 is over and it hurt, it, whatever. Like, it's like notice what's coming up and figure out a way, I don't know, to take action that's going to make you feel better, right? Not to stay stuck and wallowing in pain. That's what squares want you to do. They want you to make a change, right? And then Mercury makes a trine to Uranus the next day. And so this is going to help open up your mind to creative strategies, new ideas, you might have some interesting and unusual conversations around this time, you know, New Year's Eve parties and all that will be riding on the energy of this. And then on New Year's Eve itself, there are no major aspects. But I did think it was interesting to just to consider the last aspects of the year and of the decade that the sun and the moon were making, because, you know, the sun and the moon are our lights. That's what they're called in astrology. They're the luminaries. They are very active right now because it's eclipse season, right? We're having a solar and a lunar eclipse. So even though these are very minor and not long lasting aspects, the sun and moon will be in what's called a sextile between Pisces and Capricorn. So there is a sweet connection between the things that you're, the goals and your dreams, right? And the sun is in that goal setting kind of place and the moon is in a little bit of a dreamy kind of place. So that's a nice energy, a sextile. Look for it, feel into it. What can you be thankful for? What are you happy about, you know? And then the very last aspect is the moon conjunct Neptune. So this is gonna make for some interesting New Year's Eve <laughs> parties for sure that's definitely a drinking aspect if I ever saw one and I don't know it kind of it can definitely bring a lot of inspiration right Neptune can make you feel transcendent and kind of all connected all one it can also make things a little blurry so doesn't that say a lot about this decade just you know how we've gotten more connected via the internet but how things have also gotten more diffuse because we're, or diffuse, right? Because we're constantly distracted by all the technology. So I don't know. there we go. 2019, December, it's a wrap. You were saying that the astrology, are you saying the astrology is going to make people drink more on New Year's Eve? I'm just saying that the moon conjunct Neptune and Pisces is going to have some morose drinkers. I don't know. You know how... Oh, morose. I see. I see. Uh-huh. Like kind of I, wistful I, and dreamy and thinking and... Yeah, and thinking and drinking. Yeah. I mean, Neptune and Pisces active can, you know, be an aspect that wants people to distract and detach from pain and sometimes alcohol or drugs. It's very much signature of that 
sign placement and kind of addictive things. So I know a lot of people drink on New Year's Eve. And if that's not you, just be careful. People might not be really thinking really clearly. There may be a little more than, it's one of those end of the decade parties and people I think are really going to be living it up. So for me, it's dark chocolate. I'm going to have extra dark chocolate. (laughs) What's my thing? I love chocolate too. Yeah. I don't mind a little champagne on New Year's Eve though. It's kind of fun, but yeah. You don't want to lose yourself. And so just keep safe out there if you're on the roads and whatnot, you know, definitely people are going to be partying hard. I really think so. And some people are going to be morose. Some people are going to be really just like dreamy, but it's, it's interesting to consider the moon in Pisces. It's the last sign of the Zodiac. We're ending the last year of the decade. There's just some symbolism there. If you want to feel into it, that's kind of interesting. Okay. So December, 2019, that's a wrap. We'll be back in 2020. <laughs> Katie's ready to go down to production. <laughs> <laughs> back to work. <laughs> Hello, Capricorn season. I mean, Capricorn, we're, hi. Here we're here already. Capricorn, <laughs> back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's exciting. I'm actually really, really excited about 2020. I haven't heard any of the. I just haven't heard any of the astrological sources that are saying the world's going to go to hell in a handbasket. So I've only heard good things. So I'm excited for it. You know, every you year know, has got its challenges and ups and downs, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of big astrology that people have been looking at coming for a while. And it is, we'll talk about it more next month, you know, when we get yeah. there, but it is yeah. kind of, you know, cycle setting and it's a big Saturn Pluto conjunction and Capricorn. It's a big deal. You know, it's definitely having worldwide repercussions for sure. But if you read the news or if you Google and you just kind of go down those rabbit holes, there's not, it's not all happy, joy, joy, you know, out there. There's a lot of a lot of intensity. And so just find your news sources and life is both, right? Life is both challenging and beautiful and joyful at the same time. For sure. Anything you want to share with the listeners about your beautiful Sun Center? Yeah, I mean, December events, what's going on? We have, uh, we have a ton of really cool things happening in December. I'm really excited about a full moon. Full moon? Yeah. Is that full moon? Let's see, what day is that? Yes, it's a full moon. On Wednesday, we'll be having a I'm going to be leading a full moon circle of flower essences. That will be super fun. And there's art classes where people are, oh my God, it's so cool. Making furoshiki cloth gift wrapping from botanical cyanotyping, which is like, you know, putting the leaves on, putting it out in the sun, it turns blue, indigo blue. And then you wrap your presents with that. It's just so creative and fun. So there's that and there's art club and Qigong and open houses and store open late and drinks and all kinds of fun. Festive. Yeah. So if you're in Phoenix, you've got relatives here, you're visiting, whatever, come check us out, check out our calendar on sunsenterphx.com. What have you got going, Christina? Well, I'm just working away here. I am getting excited because I've been looking back at what hasn't worked and what I want to grow into. And I'm going to be making some changes to my astrology membership that are really exciting that I will be announcing around that full moon in Gemini. So get on my mailing list if you want to be first to know about that and get the best kind of offers for that launch. And I think 2020 is going to just bring a deepening into what I know. And I'm excited to study a lot like I'm in an Ayurvedic program. And I'm also starting to study medical astrology. So I've been doing a lot of teaching and I'll continue to teach, but I'm kind of honing and focusing it down into like two areas so that I can do my own studies. And and, because I miss studying, I'm an eternal student. And when you're working all the time and always busy, you hardly, it's hard to have time to do things that can help you grow your own learning. So I'm excited to learn new things. Mm, That sounds so fun. Yeah. Medical astrology. Oh, you'll have to share more. Will you share more? Yeah, I, I will. I think I want to start merging that with some yoga nidras that I'll be creating and working into the medical, like the parts of the body that the sun sign activates for that solar season, things like that. I've been practicing them on my own and like I, with Capricorn in particular, just to get ready. And it's really nice stuff. I like it. I love yoga nidra. That's something else that I'm completing my certification on in the early 2020 as well. I don't know what medical astrology is, but have you ever seen the book by Stephanie Marengo, Dr. Stephanie Marengo, called Your Body and the Stars? I have, yes. Is it sort of related to that? Yes. That is, you know, in medical astrology, the different signs are present and active in different parts of your body, starting with your head, with Aries, and kind of moving all the way down your body, ending with Pisces at your feet. But it's much more than that. It's really like how the planets 
what they do in the chart. They kind of activate things and different systems and looking at your natal chart and seeing lifestyle changes you can make to like up your vitality or where you might have challenges. It's people do a lot with medical astrology. I am a new, new newbie, but I'm fat. You know, I was a birth worker for a long time. I have a lot of experience in the field of wellness. So being able to merge those two together is pretty exciting for me. Babies and bones and... Ayurveda. Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, babies and bones and oh yeah, what would you say? Blood, blood, yes, blood, mm, blood marrow, bones, mm. the marrow of your bones where you make your bl- blood cells. Okay, well, happy solstice and happy holidays and happy end of the year to all the listeners. Thank you for joining us for this year on the moonshine of 2019. Thank you. We, you know, I just want to say people write to me, people come over and they're, and I just get so much good feedback from y'all out there. And and it's just so nice to hear from you and nice to meet people and nice to know that it's supportive and helping you on your journey. So I'm, I'm super grateful for the listeners and for Katie for inviting me in every month to have this conversation or rather monologue slightly slash conversation. <laughs> it's conversational. All pretty right. much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's been fun. Yeah. Two years. Yes, two years. It's been two years of moonshining. Oh, it's wild. It's good stuff. So yeah, enjoy your downtime. Take care of yourselves. Nourish. Recharge. You deserve it. See you next decade. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for listening to The Flower Lounge. I'm Katie Hess, and we'll be releasing a new podcast every Wednesday. If you like what you heard or you know someone who might be touched by our conversation, share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe. To find out what your favorite flowers mean about you, take the quiz at lotusway.com.